Halo Infinite has a plethora of amazing sets of armor, but despite the variety the game already provides, today I want to take some time to look at the armor that didn't make it into the final cut. I took some time looking into the game's concept art and even brought the art of Halo Infinite book for myself, and there's a lot to dive into. And although I won't be going over every single piece of armor that didn't make the final release, I still want to talk about a lot of it, but I do recommend picking up the art of Halo book for yourself, and looking into a lot of this concept art online, that's where I found most of it. But anyway, without wasting any more of your time, if you do enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new here. I really do appreciate it, and it really does help the channel out. With all that out of the way, let's jump straight in. Now these first three pages that we're going to take a look at come straight from the Art of Halo Infinite book, as I mentioned that I'd purchased earlier. And straight away, looking at this first piece, you can already recognise a few of the helmets. You can see Enigma and ISR there, as well as a few others that did make it into the game. But there's definitely some here that didn't. The first one that jumps out to me is the Warrior Helmet. This is a fan favourite from Halo 4 and 5, and it's obviously been redesigned for Halo Infinite. It seems like its concept art got, got much further than some of the other helmets on here as well, some of which did make it into the game. So I definitely see this one showing up at some point. Maybe if we're lucky it could actually appear in Season 3. Its redesign looks awesome too, like I like Warrior anyway, but this version looks so much better. One of these helmets also looks somewhat reminiscent of Rogue from Halo 3, and hopefully this one gets added eventually too. On this next page you can instantly notice Warmaster and Soldier, both helmets that made it into the game, but I do kind of like how Soldier looks here, this little mouthpiece makes it look a lot better and it's a shame that that isn't on the final design. But as far as some of the other helmets go, you'll notice that one of them is actually one of the helmets that was used by one of the members of Silver Team in the Halo TV series. Regardless of how I feel about the show, I'll admit that the armour that Silver Team uses are pretty cool and it's, it's a real shame that this helmet never made it in. I'm going to go with the assumption the reason this helmet alongside EOD never made it into Infinite is because they were used in the show. So they're most likely being saved for some future event that ties into it. Maybe that could come with Season 2 of the series or much later on down the line, who knows. But there's definitely quite a few helmets on this page that I think look really, really good. And I don't know why, but the one in the bottom right definitely reminds me of the Mark IV, so this is another one I'd love to see. I do believe all of these must have been designed for the Mark VII, but it's possible they will be added to different cores in future instead. Like, if we ever do get the ones from the TV series, I'd assume they'd be available for a Mark VI core rather than the Mark VII. Obviously, when cross-cores are thing, that won't matter, but you get my point. And since the Mark VII is the main core for the game, I'd expect to get a couple of Mark VII helmets and other pieces of armor every single season. Season 2, I believe, had two shot bundles and then maybe four helmets in the battle pass. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a similar amount in every other future season. This next page from the book is a very, very interesting one. This is obviously the Mark IV, the armor that Red Team wear in Halo Wars, and overall just a very, very popular set of armor within the Halo community. To be fair, I don't think this would have got very far in terms of development. I believe this was probably just created, I believe this piece of artwork was created to demonstrate the core system and what 343 probably had planned for it. But if we ever do get this Mark IV core, I would love to see some of these pieces of armor visualized, as a lot of them look really cool. You'll also notice when it comes to the attachments, obviously you have the things that you'd expect, like your chest pieces, shoulder pads, etc. But then some of the utility pieces are actually on both sides. And there's even like actual leg armor that adds onto that and makes your legs look much buffer. I still believe it's very possible we will get the Mark IV core at some point in the future, as there's a plethora of armor in the series that 343 can implement. To be fair, as of right now, we've been getting a good balance of new armors and returning classics. Even with the Rakshasa core, something that was new, we still had the implementation of some old helmets, like the Locust helmet. Speaking of Rakshasa, there's also some amazing concept art for that armor core, and some of this is really depressing that it was never added. It seems like when it was being designed, 343 were going to go all the way with this idea of the Rakshasa core being this sort of scrap metal scavenger armor set. You can see how some of the attachments were basically just throwing bandages around the armor. And there's a lot more desert looking gear with like a helmet that has all these bandages wrapped around it. There's even one that looks like the default Mark VII helmet but wearing a, a mask like a balaclava on the front and that looks awesome! 
And here you can see the default Rakshasa helmet, but with like sort of a poncho wrapped around it. There's also a ghillie suit one there. You do, of course, see some of the bits of armor that were implemented. There's the chest piece there with the teeth on the front, which was obviously changed up in the final release. But you can see some of the stuff that was added mixed in with a lot of these really cool concepts. I still think Rikshasa is an awesome armor set, but I do wish they'd taken it further with the concepts that they had planned with it being this scavenger armor. And on this final page here for the Rikshasa stuff, one of these shoulder pads actually is in the files, but for some reason was never released. This one with the sniper bullets on the far right. Seems like there's a lot of Rikshasa armor that was planned that just ha is covered in like knives and ammo and stuff like that. And we did get a lot of pieces similar to that, just not to the extent. Some of these other bits of concept art aren't exactly things that were designed but haven't been implemented yet, but rather designs for helmets that were implemented. Here we can see alternate designs for both Rampart and Trailblazer. Rampart and Trailblazer are obviously the newer versions of EOD and Recon, and you can definitely see a bit more of the inspiration for those in some of the alternate designs. And the third design on the top row, this one definitely looks much more like classic EOD, but honestly I think I prefer Rampart over both those other designs anyway. And when it comes to Trailblazer, the one on the far left looks much more in line with Halo 4 and 5 Recon. We've also got some more for Soldier and Warmaster here, and Soldier almost looked identical to how it did in 4 and 5. And again we see Soldier in the far right in the third piece, with this sort of mouthpiece that looks great, and I really wish that was its helmet attachment rather than the basil attachment. As for Warmaster, the other concepts look cool, but I'm really glad we got what we did get, as I believe that looks much more in line with the regular Warmaster helmet. On this next piece, we can see a bunch of alternate attachments that were considered for most of these helmets, and some of these look phenomenal. The very first one for Volan that adds this weird sort of visor piece to it looks great, it looks super unique. I'm just very curious to know why a lot of this wasn't really considered or never made it into the final cut. It seems like there was going to be a lot more attachments that were considered for more than one helmet, and we did get a few of those, but they were only available in Season 1 and we haven't really seen them since. We have more like little radio headphone pieces and I hope we get more of these in the future. There actually is a few attachments on this page, mostly the one I'm looking at is the one for the Cavallano helmet that again was in the files, it was even used on the Cyber Showdown promo art and just never made it into the game which was insane. Would have been great if that was added as an ultimate reward as I believe that would definitely be one that people grind for. I still think it's very very possible that a lot of these will make it into the future. You can also see Firefall's attachment here which everyone knows already exists but for some reason but for some reason was never released with the helmet. Anyway, moving on to this next page, we have a bunch more concepts for helmets that never made it into the game. Cavallano is on here, but right next to it to the left, you can see the Mark VI Gen 2, the one that Master Chief wears in Halo 4 and 5. I believe this was most likely an early concept that eventually evolved into the Mark V Zeta, as both these helmets have clear similarities, but I'd hope that in future we get both of these. Maybe the reason it wasn't added is because 343 would love to do a Gen 2 armor core in the future, which I honestly hope they do. And a lot of these other helmets on here look great. The next thing I want to take a look at isn't actually 2D art, this is 3D art, which means this is a model that 343 already have possession of, and this is the pilot helmet from Halo Reach, which means we could actually see this one implemented very soon. Maybe they're saving this for a future infection event that could come with the haunted variant, that would be amazing. This final piece of artwork probably ties into the hero shooter idea that 343 originally wanted to go with for Halo Infinite that obviously they decided against, which was probably the right call. But you'll notice this is the armor core that the commander character uses. Obviously when you see her in the tutorial and in any cutscenes, cinematics that she's in, she's obviously wearing this armor. But there's a lot of different variants. You notice the first one is core, then you have heavy, rifleman, scout, breach and marksman. And it seems like there were some really cool ideas that were planned for the core system. It's a shame that this wasn't really visualized. But I just want to say that I really, really hope we get this armor core in future. I mean, it's literally already in the game. I don't understand why it hasn't been implemented. I think it'd be a great idea to add that in season four, but who knows. Anyway, that's basically every single piece that I've got to talk about. There is a lot more concept art for armor out there, and I recommend looking into some of that yourself, because a lot of it looks awesome. But let me know which piece your favourite is. Is there any helmet on here that you really, really wish was added? I think a lot of the Mark 7 ones will make it into the game eventually. I have no doubt in my mind about that. Same with, like, attachments for the Mark 7, as that is the primary core that's probably never going to stop getting content. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.